The following podcast is a next level production. I do hope my attendance delights you. Thank you, Verusa, for seeing it through and for shaping our cause like no other. With my passing, It is now time to choose a new leader in the crusade against monsters. This honor can only be bestowed upon the strongest and most committed to our mission. Very soon, a monster unlike anything you faced will be released into these sacred grounds. The hunter who slays this beast will become our new leader, taking possession of my bloodstone. Good luck. I'll be rotting for you. Hey, Palmers, welcome back to the show. I'm Mark. And I'm Rob. And this is going to be a spoiler full podcast about Werewolf by Night, a Disney Plus special. All right, so we've been away for a while. And as, as you could tell, Steve is not here right now for uh, this particular episode, but a lot of things get in the way in life. Uh, just like with Ben Beck, he, he's been, he took a hiatus for about two months. Uh, he does Wilhelm. Uh, Steve's been having some uh, personal issues, physical issues, so he's been taking care of that, just like I was for a while. Uh, I've also been dealing with going back to work and (laughs) coordinating with editing and everything like that. So I'm trying to get everything 100% for Panels to Pixels, as well as Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. So bear with us. By the time you get this episode, you probably already have two episodes of Panels to Pixels already up, and maybe one other episode of Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. But this will explain it nonetheless. So basically, uh, I've been trying to reacclimate and get to where I need to be. Holidays are coming, so I hope everybody's out there getting their gifts. So, yeah, it's that time of the year. But in this case, it's still Halloween for us. I love Halloween. For me, it goes from the beginning of October all the way to the almost end of November, right before Thanksgiving. Because I love it. It's Samhain. Or... Sawin for some people. So <laughs> to me, I just love that. And that's why we're covering Werewolf by Night, a Disney Plus special. So, Rob, give us the uh, synopsis of this particular little special we got from Disney Plus. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So here we go. Following the death of Ulysses Bloodstone, five experienced monster hunters, including Jack Russell, are summoned by Ulysses' widow, Barusa, to Bloodstone Manor where they are instructed to participate in a competitive hunt to determine their new leader who will wield the powerful bloodstone. The bloodstone. Sounds like something out of uh, a full moon feature. (laughs) Yeah, no. If you remember those particular films back in the 80s and 90s, remember? (laughs) Yep. (laughs) The bloodstone. Yeah. Uh, all, all, all the eighties, uh, all the eighties horror films are always so uh, campy and, uh, but you know they're they're fun. They are fun. I love Full Moon too. I actually have the Puppet Masters on DVD. I have the whole collection, and I actually have a few action figures. Do you really? <laughs> and a replica of Blade. So yeah, I love having that stuff around. I to me, if you know, I I feel sorry for any woman that comes into my apartment. They go, oh, wait, it's Halloween all the time. Yes, it is. Yeah. (laughs) We're just grown boys. (laughs) Yeah, I know a few people that they love Halloween so much that they have decorations all year round. And it works, too. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Well, down to brass tacks, getting to this particular episode or movie. It's not really a movie. It's only an hour long, ladies and gentlemen. So if you haven't listened to it, and like I said, this is a spoiler full podcast. So with that, it's only an hour. It's a Disney Plus MCU special. Now, this one is very special in a sense because it's black and white for the most part. I would say about 98% of the movie 
is black and white. And with that, we're going to go into our, uh, our initial thoughts. So, Rob, you start us off. What, what did you think about this particular special that we got? You know what? I'm going to tell you this. Um, this is probably, to me, one of the best MCU projects that they have done on Disney Plus. While the others, you know, there have been a lot of controversies with some of the other ones where, you know, some people didn't like it. Some people just think they were weak. For what this is, I think this was great. This was an absolute gem of a show. It harkens back to the, you know, to the shows of the 1930s and 40s because it's in black and white. So it has that grainy black and white look. Mm -hmm. um, but also, I have to say, I mean, one thing, um, the director who did this, Michael Gacchino, I uh, always pronounce his name, who's actually a well-known composer, this was his first directorial debut. And he did a phenomenal job on this. This was his first time he ever directed a movie. I mean, he's he's well-known for all his, uh, you know, all his compositions for movies in the MCU. And I mean, he is, I mean, if you look up his body of work when it comes to composing music, he's phenomenal. He's the guy who did uh, the Batman. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. So he, he, and there's actually a behind the scenes documentary or, you know, kind of behind the scenes look on Werewolf by Night. And it shows a lot of his, like when he was a kid, he was just, you know, this kid that wanted to just make movies and him and his friends will make movies <laughs> all the time. And everybody in the family and every all his friends, and yeah, everybody just kind of supported him on that. And he still had a lot of these movies, so they showed it on the on the show. And I was like, I was saying to myself, this guy was born to do this. This is what he always wanted to do. So he did a great job. I think it was a great job. Huh. I and like I said, he also he also composed the music for his own uh, movie, but which is great too. But yeah. no, he he did a, he did I think a phenomenal job on this. This is a great movie that it, it's it's a standalone movie that allows you to just watch it and not try to think of how does this fit in the MCU, mm -hmm. you know, or how does this fit in uh, what I would say, you know, like the whole story of phase four or whatever it is. This is kind of a stand. Is it in the MCU? Yes. Mm -hmm. But it's, it, it, we just don't know. And yeah. it's fine. It's, it's actually, you know, perfectly fine. And I, and I think that Marvel, which has a, big gallery of all these monsters is finally starting to tap into this and this was like their first go at it mm -hmm. which i think is great although you could technically say moon knight was but this is really a go at you know the classic horror kind of you know uh movie monster type of things and mm -hmm. i think they did a great job you know i mean i wish that universal uh when they try to do the dark universe <laughs> 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 which uh, you and i covered yeah um I wish this, I wish they kind of took some inspiration from this, but this actually came after that. But um, this is how you actually start. If if Marvel's going to start doing their own horror spin on things, I think this is the right way of doing it. I think they did a phenomenal job on this. Yeah. And of course, you know, spoilers, I think Man-Thing was done so well. <laughs> you know, so it's... Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a great it, it was great. I, I just thought it was a great, great show <laughs> or a great movie. I thought I mean it wasn't too long where you felt like, oh my god, this is dragging. I didn't feel like it was dragging. Um even <laughs> it was though very action packed, some, yeah. Yeah, there was there's some comments online that some people thought it was just slow. I was like, I don't know where you thought it was slow. It was just a one hour, you know, it was not even an hour, but you know, so but it was good. I, I liked it. What did you think about it? I honestly thought that this was like very cool for what they how they approached it. You already mentioned it about it the uh, the universal uh, kind of scare to it that the the black and white alone harkens back to Universal's 1930s and how they were doing those that dark universe that they tried to do that you know which you mentioned kind of like how right. we, you and I covered the 2017 Mummy with Tom Cruise <laughs> on uh, you know fantasy picks movie edition but in this case they did it pretty well with the segue with the introduction with the marvel logo in the very beginning with the screams and how dark it was and the transition with the logo and and very similar to the universal logo with the title 
because right. it was very the, the that bold print, and that's how they used to do it back in the day. And then it just moves right into the story, which is black and white. And the funny thing is, I really loved and enjoyed the overall. We got our introduction, not just to Werewolf by Night, but also a character that I've been looking forward to. And I kind of mentioned to Steve a long time ago, I wanted to see Man-Thing. Man-Thing is kind of the swamp thing of literally the the Marvel, the Marvel comic yeah. universe. And I love Man-Thing because just the way he looks, he had that big snout trunk. The yes. little uh, like dreadlocks on the side, the red eyes. He burned people who feared him, who did evil. It, right. We got all of that within this particular special that really did everything that I wanted out of Ted because Ted Swamp Thing is literally the character that we get. And yes. he is who he is. He, he gives that kind of shrug look at the end, talking to Elsa. <laughs> I just, there's so many things that I love about this, not just from the black and white and transitioning and how they do it, which we'll get to later, but also the action within it, how it made it more uh, acceptable for kids to watch. Because even when, you know, Jack turns to werewolf by night and he's right. killing all those troopers that were brought in by Elsa's mom. Now, we said spoilers, everybody. So, if you can't deal with that, you could go back, come back and listen, go watch it. But there was blood splatter on the screen and you do yes. see claw marks on this steel door that it shows the power and the how it, agile he is as this particular cower, character and taking out everybody within those scenes, and those action scenes. Plus, we get a little bit of kind of like a love story, a little bit between Elsa and Jack. There's some right. sort of rapport. And I thought that was great. And, you know, it was a lot to be fueled in within one hour alone. We got great music, great action, a decent story, in my opinion. It wasn't great, but it was decent, in my opinion, and how all these people were brought together and why they were brought together. Plus, we don't know when it was done. When was this? Was there any? I didn't see any cell phones. I, I'm if I'm wrong. There were or, no cell phones, but I mean, he does mention sushi. But then again, you know, but it 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 somehow takes place. I think. Well, you know what? They do mention the Avengers in the beginning. Okay, so that gives us a definitive time. Right, but the funny thing is, is we don't have all those major appliances that we don't exactly. have any of the modern technology that we are succumb to today to give this or transport us into this world, which is like a standalone. And honestly, that is genius in yeah. a sense. The only glimpses, like you said, was like they mentioned the Avengers, but honestly. Yeah, you know, even down to the animatronic uh, 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 creator of Ulysses and his little coffin, <laughs> something out of Willy Wonka from yeah. like Johnny Depp, or even from Disney World, if you think about it. Yeah. And and to me, I thought that was uh, amazing. But you know, I, I'm kind of spoiling it and saying how much I loved it, and I do like it. To me, this is something I could watch every Halloween as oh, just absolutely. a one-off. And yeah. we ha we have one more special, and we'll talk about the you know this just slightly, but it's something to look forward to for the holiday season that's coming up. The Guardians in the Galaxy holiday special, so we're gonna get that too. So we get to yeah. see uh, Dave Batista back and Mantis Dave Batista as uh, what's his name Drax Drax, and they go out to find uh, Kevin Bacon. For Star Lord, <laughs> yeah. so uh, that's another special I'm looking forward to, and we will be covering that too as well uh, in the coming. Yeah, I think by the end of the month because that comes out in November as well. So check that out when that comes out. Hopefully, Steve will be better by then, and then uh, maybe we could do, uh, you know, have a a triumphant and have uh, Rob back and do that and have that because yeah, be these are all fun to do. And uh, honestly, with these specials, even if they're just an hour long, they're always entertaining. So with that, we're going to go right into our highlights, our favorite highlights of the actual 
special for Werewolf by Night. So, Rob, what is your first one? So, my first one, I would have to say, one of the things I kind of really like was the werewolf makeup. So, the werewolf makeup was all, you know, of course, real makeup. It wasn't all CG or anything like that. I think the only... And you know what? I ha- I'm going to have to find out this because when you, they show the hands mm-hmm. and the hand all of a sudden transforms, I don't know if that was a practical thing or CG thing, but I know that the rest of him was an actor in mm-hmm. a suit. And I was very happy about that. I was like, okay, that's really cool. They actually went with practical effects when it came to the werewolf itself. Yes. Yeah. We got that true traditional Lon Chaney Jr. look. Yes. That we all, and then literally that's taken strictly straight from the comic to the image that we get on screen. So right. this is what we got. So those of you who don't read the comic and saw this and going, oh, that's kind of cheesy. Well, honestly, that is what the Werewolf by Night looks like within the comics. So right. Jack Russell looks like that when he does transform. You got the kind of paw feet and you got the claws on the hands. And it's right. got that Lon Chaney Jr. look with the bushy hair and the fur all over him with, and also with the fangs. But it was kind of very panel to pixel as it needed to be. And I love that aspect. I'm yeah, glad no, that, that they're, we're getting that. You know, we're actually getting that. Same thing with Man-Thing. With Ted, he looked just like Man-Thing. Not that yes. crazy, stupid 2004 sci-fi channel movie that we got, which I hate. <laughs> and because uh honestly and that was approved by marvel back then ladies and gentlemen so uh, if you really want to struggle and waste about an hour and 20 minutes of your life and you watch that movie go ahead i have it i don't know why i got it but i have it but i suggest uh, you get a lot of liquor when you do that <laughs> uh yeah the only time you actually do see it is at the very end and it's full visage and right. it looks like something out of the ring Oh, geez. <laughs> <laughs> so, but my recommendation, love the Ted we got, because that's the Ted we have. More about Ted we'll talk about. But right. with mine, one scene that I really enjoy, and it's in the very beginning, too, and I like to go things as they come, the trophies on the wall. Oh, I was going to mention that. Yes. I love those trophies on the walls. Oh, my God. Especially when... You know, uh, I guess he was a Scottish man that was there and he was talking right, to right. Jack and he goes, oh, how many of these? I was like, oh, but I hit that one. And it looked like something like um, Man Bat out of Batman. If it you- did. And from what I hear, um, so, of course, in the comic books, uh, Werewolf by Night actually does fight with Dracula. You know, in several, you know, the episodes back then. So that was kind of like a, you know, heart Easter back eggs. To, yeah. Easter egg of him fighting a vampire. Awesome. And so, yeah, if you, and if, again, if you guys look at the, um, at the behind the scenes of this movie, they show the workshop that was doing all these heads mm-hmm. and they show really good detail. So that like they, they really zoom into it and they show so much great detail that you didn't see in the actual movie. But the movie, of course, you know, since they want to make it like into the, you know, a black and white, they put a lot of grain in it yeah, in order to give it that grainy look. So, but in this instance, it was all high def. You get to see a lot of details on these heads and it looked uh, absolutely amazing. I thought it was great. Yeah, I I just love all the different variety, too. We had kind of like images, too, in the very beginning coming through because with uh, U- Ulysses Bloodstone and him introducing. Now, my question is i didn't look at the credits was that clancy brown that was introducing everything and talking about the story i'm curious about that um no i don't know i sounded a lot like him yeah um if i'm not mistaken i think it was uh i forgot the person's name but he he has done voiceovers and done the voice of thor Hmm. in some of the marvel cartoons Awesome, um, but yeah. So, but yeah, I thought it was Clancy Brown, so but it, it it wasn't him. Uh, well, yeah, well, yeah, but it gave me that eerie chill because it sounded like Clancy. So, you know, I, yeah. I, I, if I could hear the Kurgan anytime I want, I would love to. But you know, that that's a little message to you know the Disney Plus and Marvel that's out there. Please get Clancy right. Brown to do more voiceover work. The other thing that I wanted to point out because of the uh, the things that we do get to see, it looked like there was a Yeti. 
a Sasquatch that was there too as well, which kind of points and makes me think of Alpha Flight. You know, so funny you said that, right? So when the when the show starts mm-hmm. and they talk about how, you know, there's heroes and the marvels of the heroes and stuff like that. And also you see the like the 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 camera panning down mm-hmm. and then they start talking about monsters. And then they show the vampire, right? That we see on the thing. But then mm-hmm. we see a monster with a tail. And I said to myself, that's a Wendigo. Yep. Yep. And but they never mention it. Yeah, they nope. have never mentioned it because then they show a man fighting with a Sasquatch or something. And on the bottom it says Sasquatch Bigfoot or something like that. Yes. Um, but I don't think they were talking about the Alpha Flight one, but it's kind of a really cool thing that they said Sasquatch. Probably an homage right. or an alluding right. to it, like an Easter egg but, that we could get. Yeah, <laughs> but, but the other one with the tail, I was like, wait, that's a Wendigo. So when they showed the monsters, you know, the heads of the monsters, one of those would look like just a snarling monster with white fur. And I'm like, is that the Wendigo? <laughs> yeah, know, so exactly. I, I, yeah, so I was like, hey, Wolverine and, you know, and everybody else has fought with this thing, you know? So. Yeah, well, it actually was within the Hulk 180, uh, Incredible Hulk 181, the introduction right. of Wolverine, but that's what the Hulk encounters is the Wendigo and Wolverine at the same time. So that was <laughs> right. like, an, uh, was, was, you know, Disney, Marvel, like, teasing us, hey, Mutants might come. Oh, by the way, we have some Wendigo here too. <laughs> so that'd be so cool <laughs> if we do. It'd be so yeah, awesome. exactly. So yeah, I thought that was a really cool. I was like, all right, you know, they they, they haven't said that that's really you know the Wendigo. I, I was like, yeah, I think it was. You know, <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah, they it had some really cool. Uh, I would say you know somewhat Easter eggs in there. Um, mm. But yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really did enjoy that. Uh, you have another one? Yeah, you know, I have to say, so during the during the during the whole movie, mm-hmm. of course, the movie's in black and white, but the one thing they show is the bloodstone in red. And yes, is, it's the red. only thing that's in color. It's the only thing that's in color. So that splash of red, always with the bloodstone and, and the power of the bloodstone, is mm-hmm. always in red. And then towards the very end. When everything is over, that's when now the whole thing starts to become in color, which is like the last probably three minutes of the of the movie. Mm-hmm. But I thought that was a very cool artistic touch on that. That the only thing that they show in color was that bloodstone. Okay, well, you, you, yes, definitely throughout the whole special, it was red, glowing, it was there, it was even on Ted himself when he got right. it, too. But exactly, that, let's talk about that transitioning, too, because, you know, spoilers, yeah, Elsa lives at the end, and she's head of the household, there's no mom, mom, but... The she's giving orders to the servants that are there to clean up this crap that's going right. on because of the mess, and it starts with her red dress, and it goes up and it moves on and and they're doing uh somewhere over the rainbow by Judy yeah. Garland, and <laughs> Which, I thought it was amazing. Yes, because it it actually it was so funny when you see it you see her red leather jacket yes. then you see the colors you know start and then at the, when when they were playing that I was like that's awesome because when when you look at you know Wizard of Oz mm-hmm. uh, you know you have um, uh, what's her name um, Dorothy she opens the door and mm-hmm. now everything's in color and I was like oh that is just perfect I it's mean, just that was, perfect I thought, yeah yeah I yeah. thought that was actually a very good. Uh, like I said, very, very good, nice touch. And yeah. and if you actually see other movies do that, one of them that came to mind was uh, Saving Private Ryan, when the little girl that has the red coat, it was meant to be seen as, hey, this is an, this is so just to show one important or you know one person yes. that somehow this will come back to you, and it does. You know, and I don't want to, you know, if you haven't seen Saving Private Ryan, you should because it's absolutely amazing. But yeah, so I like the fact that, you know, the bloodstone was so important that they had to show it in color. Yes. I have to say the uh, the one cool thing that I loved was, you know, this is kind of like a, a comic funny that they did. Now, we've already mentioned it. Jack Russell. <laughs> Jack <laughs> Russell 
as the werewolf by night. Now, right. they didn't realize that uh, Stanley and the other guys who created this until later on because it's like, oh, J- Jack Russell's a dog. <laughs> Not really that kind of a dog, but it works out. And I think that's a kind of a funny. But the fact, the cool thing, though, is, is that his transition and how he turns into it, because it's kind of like a two-timing thing from Elsa's mom. And they're caged together. And he turns and he talks about how he's been trying to moderate his change. And he felt bad at how Elsa found out how right. yeah what he is and that's the reason why he had so many of a kill count as a killer for for all these uh monsters and demons that are out there that are on these walls or trophies that her father Ulysses had so and apparently this was a vengeance thing against Jack by Elsa's mom and for right. Elsa's mom to take control or if not grant that to Elsa I wasn't sure entirely on that whole story plot but my feeling was it was more about the mom trying to take over. But at the very end, Elsa does. But which was, uh, I think, really good. And I would love to see that character again. But the fact is, their relation within the cage, he talks to her. And then she's able to calm him down. Very much like how Black Widow kind of calmed down Bruce Banner as the whole. Exactly. Yeah. So it, it, you, you kind of get to see, again, the MCU part of that. And yes. So, and for and for all of you out there, so you know, where so Werewolf by Night again, you know, it's it, it's kind of the uh, the thing that people might say, oh, but you know, he's not a superhero. If you look at all the stuff that Werewolf by Night has done, so he has been in comic books with Iron Man, Moon Knight, uh, Tigra, um, mm-hmm. Doctor Strange, the West Coast Avengers, Spider Woman. I mean, you name it, Morbius. I mean, he has been in so many team ups. With yes. all these uh, Marvel, you know, so the fact that they did something like that, that kind of reminded you of, you know, that part of the of of Marvel. At the of the comics. Yeah. Yeah, the comics and stuff. So one little thing, though, just so you know. Um, mm-hmm. So the person who actually came up with this, his name was, uh, what was his name? Um, Gary Conway. Yes. It's the guy who came up with, you know, and he, when they asked him about the Jack Russell thing, he says that he did not really name it after dog and he never owned a dog so he doesn't know he doesn't know how he came up with that name he just came up with the name and it just <laughs> it happened just, to be it, a yeah. dog type <laughs> i know exactly so it was kind of cool when i because when i saw it at first i go really jack russell come on <laughs> <laughs> yeah and to give you a tip to uh listeners that are out there if you are interested in a little bit brief history of uh, Jack Russell's Werewolf by Night. He first appeared in Marvel Spotlight in number two in February 1972. So right. to give the brief history of it, he inherited his curse from his family, his father. So he was not bitten by a werewolf. This has been a family curse. This was at a time when Marvel was really dealing with Dracula, Mephisto, and all those things because they couldn't talk about Satan, and right. they had to go through the Marvel Comics code, kind of like with Ghost Rider. But they created these characters nonetheless, and to give an homage to like the Universal monster, so they got a werewolf out of this. Yeah. So he first turned when he was 18 years old, when he came of age, I guess, when he was an adult. So I think it's pretty cool that the fact that we got this. A lot of people, when they think of Werewolf by Night, they think of J. Jonah Jameson's Jr. or J. Jonah Jameson Jr. And mm-hmm. from Spider-Man, that was a uh, the man-wolf, I think, at night or whatever right. the where he had the little jewel and he went to the moon and he came back and he was a white wolf this is a brown wolf so completely <laughs> two different characters keep that in mind we, so you know uh when steve and i were covering moon knight i was in so high in anticipation thinking about those jackals as being werewolf by night well they weren't thankfully <laughs> they we got a special i think marvel realizes like yeah hey, we're gonna trick them with this we're gonna give them the jackal and make it look like it's werewolf by night because the first appearance of moon knight was in werewolf by night issue number 32 so we're gonna right. do this and nope nope 
but we got it in October, so we got it. So cool. Yes. Thank you, uh, Marvel, for actually paying attention. I think we should talk to the AI Kevin Feige, who is in the shoot <laughs> episodes. Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, thank you very much, Mr. Kevin Feige. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One of the one of the really cool things uh, I, that I found out is that this this character was, actually was created in 1954. This is before the Comic Code's authority. Yeah, and then after the you know, the whole Comic Code thing, you know, which of course, if uh, if a lot of you out there don't know what the Comic Code uh, authority was, it was kind of like a self governing. You know, it wasn't even a government thing no. where they were actually looking at comic books as a matter of fact all comic book uh, companies will send the stories out to the authority and then they will approve to see if it can actually be should be on there so anything that had to do with werewolves and vampires and all those things anything horror anything that had to do with mentioning drugs or sex or anything like that was completely next out and then around 1971 they started actually kind of relaxing these rules and that's where werewolf by night really took off yeah and then of course if you if you keep if you keep kind of looking at it and stuff like that todd mcfarland talks a lot about it where like how he said you know screw this i am not gonna actually you know give my <laughs> stuff to the uh, for, for that to, and that's why you know image comics was one of the you know one of those com you know comic book companies i just said Comic book authority? No, nah, hell no. No. Nah. And then everybody else, you know, started doing the same thing, and now they don't exist anymore, which I think is great. But yeah, that I think that was cool. That fact that it was all the way back then, it was actually this. Uh, there was a werewolf by night, and you know what? I never thought when I heard the first time, oh, there's <laughs> going to be a werewolf by night show on on Disney Plus. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. I was like, really? Holy crap! You guys are coming from left field with that. But you know what? I, like I said. It became one of my favorite Disney Plus shows. Yeah, yeah, it, so. it, yeah. It's same here. It, to me, it fulfilled all my childhood needs as far as when yeah. it came to horror and comics together. And we got it finally. Uh, yeah. Now my feeling is we could finally get that particular Monster Squad, as it were, because. <laughs> There was a Marvel fanfare issue number 28, and I'm going to look it up yet again because I already had it at one point. Yeah, there's actually a group called, uh, what is it, something, Midnight Suns, where... No, th this was called the Legion of Monsters. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you look it up, uh, it came out, it was Legion of, uh, it was Marvel fanfare issue number 28, Legion of Monsters, and with that... You have, you got Morbius, you have Man-Thing, you have Ghost Rider, mm. and who else? I'm trying to remember. Dracula? No? No, uh, Man-Thing, Morbius, Werewolf by Night, and Ghost Rider. That's it. Okay. And uh, yeah, it was uh, Marvel premiere number 28 and came out in 1975. Now, you can find it online if you want to really buy it, but I love the cover because you have them all leaping and coming after you on that cover, and it's right. really opening. I have I had that issue. I got to dig to go find it because that was something <laughs> I would see GC grade. But right now, it's uh, you can find it probably for like $51 online, but if you go for like C true like higher-end CGC grading, you're probably looking at the thousands. But wow. me, yeah. For me, I I when it comes to like old horror comics, I, I love where monsters dwell, which is another one. Uh, Marvel did a whole bunch of others like Frankenstein and uh, remakes of that. They had a whole thing running on Cold Legion, some monsters, but it was very limited in capacity. But they intertwined. Right. But the the Marvel premiered number twenty eight. That literally was them all getting the ones that they created specifically from Marvel together. Right, and right. and honestly, they do eat everybody that's out there. So <laughs> uh, keep that in mind. This is not something you hand your kid who's like five years old. But mommy, they're chewing up people. No, you don't want to hand that to your kid. Plus, it's <laughs> from 1975, so it's kind of old. <laughs> mm. So so tell me something. So he, here's a question for you. Um, 
because like I said, I mentioned that, you know, how I like the show and it's been one of Disney's favorite. Do you think this would have been so good if they would have dragged it out to 10 episodes? I don't think so. I think it should have been left like they did a standalone right. and just to exactly. introduce it. And then if they do happen to do get another monster. So now mind you, we have to keep in mind Morbius is a Sony product. Yes. So we don't have Morbius unless Sony's going to play ball with the MCU. Which now, they're not. <laughs> which eh, to some degree. With between Spider Man, you and I have had questions out yeah, you know, talks yeah. about this outside of uh podcasting and at work, but they do have the claims to Ghost Rider yet again, and there's still talks about them getting a Johnny Storm or another version of Ghost Rider. I right. personally would love to see Johnny Storm. I'm not talking about the Nicolas Cage version. Now, mind you, the second <laughs> one was better than the first, but the overacting of Nicolas Cage, which I do like and have fun with, and it's kind of corny, but honestly, it should be sent given to another actor to fulfill yeah. as Johnny. And I think it still works in the sense of Johnny Blaze, as it were. In Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., they actually had the uh, the Hispanic version of Ghost Rider with the yes. Mustang, I believe it Correct. was. And I did appreciate that character. Now, mind you, what they utilized him for, not so much. The effects right. were kind of campy and cheesy. ABC was kind of lacking at the time. They weren't really dumping that much into Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Now, mind I mean, you, that, show, that show became one of those things where it started really good and they had, you know, probably a decent budget. Yes. As it, as it went along, man, it just it became something so different than it was just to me. It was just like horrible. I was like, where the hell is this going? Yeah. And we had <laughs> we had we had interaction. We had uh, we had Nick Fury in there. We had Lady Sif. Right. We got a really decent version of the Absorbing Man in there. And I really liked that version. Ghost Rider could have been worked on a little bit. Deathlock, unfortunately, I'm sorry, it, it wasn't presented well. We need Project Pegasus. We need the thing from Marvel 2 and 1 in order to create that kind of coercion. But we don't have the Fantastic Four yet. But I don't think we'll actually ever get that kind of link. Right, right. Very much like with the Marvel team ups with Spider Man and everybody else. So my feeling is I'm hoping that we get those other characters in and brought into the MCU properly, which would be great. But right now we really need to concentrate because I kind of yeah you know, digress. <laughs> no, not a problem. No, the reason I ask again is because I thought that a one hour show actually did well. And I honestly think that if they're gonna start doing all these monsters instead of doing like a feature film or something like that. Hmm. I think this was a great format to do it in because sometimes when you drag something for two and a half hours, which we all know Marvel, that's what they do. Uh, <laughs> you know, unless you do it right, and let's just be honest, this phase hasn't been that great. I think that that one hour special is fantastic for this kind of uh, genre. Yeah, um, I think yeah, absolutely amazing. Yeah. A lot, oh, a I, lot of people were not happy with She Hulk, but me and Steve yeah. kind of saw the light and loved what we got a little bit here and there. That ending, yes, you guys are going to get it, and you probably already have it by now. Of that episode that we covered of the finale of She Hulk, that was a little bit off the rails, like a crazy train, because a lot of people were just like, "We don't know where this is going. Is yeah. this part of the show?" Yes, it is, because. As you'll listen, that is how She-Hulk was written in the comics from when it was conceived, when John Byrne did it. She would rip away, move away, tear into the author, the screenwriters. We got that K-E-V-I-N character, and AI that is supposed to be jokingly Kevin Feige. Right. But they, you know, a lot of people didn't get the inside jokes. And it kind of went over people's heads and only true geeks and nerds like myself or Rob would know and Steve and all the people that will research this. But the thing is, it is entertaining nonetheless, but they could always bring She-Hulk into the MCU movie proper at will if need be. Which they will. I think yeah. they definitely will do that. But we also need that kind of campy kind of character because we haven't even gotten Deadpool yet. 
And She-Hulk was the first to break the fourth wall within the Marvel comics. At one In the point. comic books, yes. And a lot of people think it was Deadpool. But the thing is, we will get that character back. We will do we definitely will get a rated R Deadpool with Wolverine, apparently. Yes. Yeah. We've already <laughs> talked about this in previous podcasts when it happened, and me and Steve were just ecstatic, and he was kind of questioning it. And both me and Ben back said, Yes, this is true. This is happening. This is why <laughs> yeah. you don't see uh Hugh on Broadway anymore. He ended that and he's back in the gym, he's training. Just like Henry Cavill is back as Superman now. Yeah. He's not the Witcher. So uh, for those of you that anticipate the Witcher with the new season, a Hemsworth is going to be covering the Witcher. But not I don't. Chris. Not Chris. <laughs> Liam. Liam Hemsworth. Liam. Yeah. <laughs> but honestly, uh, I will check it out. I still have to catch up because Lara and Steve have been covering Witcher and I missed out on that. That one season I started watching, never finished. Sorry, everybody didn't finish. <laughs> but whether or not they're going to cover it, I don't know. But I would like them to do it if they do it two episodes per. Who knows? It might be the last of The Witcher because a lot of people loved Cavill. But yeah, that's they, what happens with recasting, you know? Yeah. And there's a big petition out there where they want Cavill back and things like that. And Cavill is a huge, huge fan of The Witcher. He knows the... He knows the subject matter so well, better than the writers. Yeah. And one of the big things that I heard was that he left, not because of the whole Superman thing that he was, but he also left because the writers did not want to listen to him. Mm -hmm. They they wanted to do their own thing. They wanted to take the character somewhere different than what the books are. And he was like, no, that's not the character. <laughs> so so I it was, I think, a big displeasure, a displeasure of him uh, with the writer and staff. And that's why one of the reasons he probably just said, you know, screw this. I mean, I got, you know, Superman back and stuff like that. Yeah. By the way, just wanted to ask you, do you mm -hmm. think Man Thing was practical or CG? I think it was a mix. They probably had a practical version of him at one point and then he mixed it with CG. And this is something that I actually spoke to uh, a couple of effects artists who I know. Uh, not to, I'm not going to drop names, but they are in the industry. One is a legend and one is ongoing and has done... Uh, all right, I'll, I'll mention the name of the movie. He did Halloween, the Halloween 2017 and Kills and Ends. So uh, <laughs> Christopher Nelson, uh, he said to me, he goes, yeah, he goes, we love the mixing of practical with CG. If yes. we could do more practical, we would. But with a character like that, you can't really do a full practical amount because it's going to cost a lot of money and you got to find the suit actor and the animatronics would be off the chart where with CG, it's a little bit less costly, but they could enhance on what they already have practically to Correct. make it work so yeah so, so the so the man thing was like when you see him walking and stuff like that full body mm -hmm. completely cg um parts of the hand the hand was actually you know animatronic and i think some close-ups were also animatronic but it was i thought it was going to be mostly uh practical but then i saw again i saw the behind the scenes and i was like oh okay they got a big 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 guy to actually get into that suit <laughs> of course they did <laughs> so, oh, yeah that's pretty cool though but yeah. not to well well for your listeners we're sorry we kind of mixed in comic news we talked about henry cavill but we got more coming on along the way uh we're coming towards the close and end of what we're going to talk what we've been talking about but we can talk about man thing a little bit more and what his introduction was within the comics, if you're interested in, because I am a huge fan. So Man Thing in comics was, uh, his name was Dr. Theodore Ted Salas, and he first appeared in Savage Tales number one in May 1971. They were trying to recreate the super soldier serum that created Steve Rogers as Captain America. But uh, AIM was looking to get this particular serum aim which you if you guys actually watched the Patton oswalt uh, <laughs> claymation style uh show that was out there of modoc right yeah aim was a big part of that and they were they're evildoers people there is for think of hydra but kind of goofy they they look like and we talked about them in 
Vision and Scarlet Witch. And uh, yeah, we did see kind of those like kind of those toxic suits that they wear that are all yellow. But they were after Ted and, and he winds up injecting himself and he gets into a car accident and there's some sort of mystic power. So the, the history about Man-Thing and his powers, he takes the super soldier serum. There was mystic forces within the swamp. So it's a little bit different. It's kind of voodoo and super soldier Marvel thing, which is trying to compare itself to Swamp Thing on the DC side. But well, this- actually, the, actually, uh, Man Thing came out first before Swamp Thing on DC. Swamp Thing did. No, Man Thing. Man Thing came out in Marvel before DC. Yeah, that, I I thought it was the other way around, but I, uh, when I was uh, doing a little research, I, I was like, oh wait a minute, yeah. So I mean, yeah. I, I I'll look it up, but you know, it's I think it's uh, interesting. I think, uh, yeah. So because yeah, first appearance was in 1971. And then Swamp Thing. Hmm. We're getting educated, Swamp everybody. In, ni- in 1974. <laughs> oh, all right, cool. So, oh, wow. So Marvel <laughs> instituted this. But we got the yes. cooler looking one, in my opinion. I like Swamp Thing. It's not like, I'm not a Swamp Thing hater. I do love Bernie Wrightson. Actually, I have a signed Bernie Wrightson issue number four from Canada of Swamp Thing. Which is a great cover, too, by the way. But... Oh wait, wait, wait! Yo, hold on. I my mistake. First appearance, nineteen seventy one. Also. Oh, right. so they were kind of working on each other. Well, uh, it was okay, tales so, of suspense, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, Savage. Okay, so Man Thing was Savage Tales number one, May of nineteen seventy one, mm-hmm. and Swamp Thing was in July of nine. So they're they're a month apart. <laughs> House of Secrets. It's called House of uh, Secrets. Yes, Night. yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> House of Secrets. I thought it was Tales of Suspense. Okay. Yeah. House of Secrets number 92, July, two months actually, July 1971. Interesting. Then, yeah. Very interesting. It's like, it's, you know, the they're so close we- together. So somebody must have been leaking something to somebody. So they wound up like, getting into well, you, that whole you do, thing you do know like in the old days you know like the dc and marvel artists they used to get together at bars yeah and they used to kind of discuss all the stuff that you know they were they're, doing they're working on yeah, yeah they're working on and stuff like that and that's why there's so many similar characters uh <laughs> from one to the other and swan thing and man thing so i guarantee you there was somebody in the bar going hey we're coming up with this and they're like you know what let's come up with something really quick first <laughs> so yeah yeah well uh, honestly you know, yeah knows? my 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 favorite is and uh, that my you know if anybody wants to get me a christmas gift for uh you know for christmas you could always get me uh, i'm not going to say the resin cast of swamp of man thing get me the resin cast not a resin cast, but the actual, you know, the the plastic statues that they have of Man Thing, because that, that to me that would work, but because right. it's cheaper too, because it's probably only like fifty bucks in comparison to resin casts that go for like three to five hundred dollars. Which, you know, yeah, I was gonna say you don't want the uh, Hot Toys ones. Come on, <laughs> no, no, I can't afford that <laughs> stuff, and I wouldn't really want to subject anybody to that. But uh, Man Thing, I just enjoyed. I just loved the way it looked. Uh, plus, and his character, the way he is, he's kind of goofy because he's, uh, in the very first few issues, he was very lummoxing, didn't know anything. Was rah, rah. And yeah, but in this case, they kind of tweaked it in the sense of the new millennium version of Ted, who he is. And, and <laughs> if you guys didn't know, six years ago, they kind of tried to reinstitute man thing into the uh the marvel comics with his own original series after x amount of years and i loved it and i thought it was funny because he goes into acting he's acting in movies as a monster (laughs) so ted is trying to act and you hear his thoughts and he's like oh i just want to act and do his thing but he ends up in trouble and dealing with all these other things that happen because of his superpowers and everything else right and part of his superpowers, too, is not just the fact that, you know, he's able to ha- apparently accumulate the bloodstone into his body at a certain point, but right. he's able to uh, feed on the fear of people and burn them. 
Because if they see him and fear him because of something that they unjustly did to somebody else, they burn in his hands. And that's what happens to uh, Elsa's mom at the end. And that's the reasoning why she died. Otherwise, if she was really a goody two-shoes, she'd be fine. She'd be alive. She wouldn't burn up like that. So right. just to give you a little bit of a hint, but I would recommend the 70s version series of Man-Thing. And then if you want for fun, go further in and read the Man-Thing series that came out about six years ago uh, in Marvel Comics. Because uh, I think they bring in Fing Fang Foom, of all things, too. Like certain uh, monsters like that. <laughs> could be. I mean, I know that he's been uh, in the Savage Wolverine. He's been in uh, Secret Wars. He's been in, I mean, tons of stuff that he's been in also. Yeah, so, he, he's yeah. a character that's been around. They just throw him around every once in a while within comics. But in this case, we finally get him in the cinematic universe for Marvel properly within right. a special. And I'm really happy that we got it. I'm looking forward to see him show up, just pop up eventually. <laughs> you know, hopefully we do get him within Ghost Rider or something. Maybe Blade becomes part of this whole legion of monsters, too, because... He, you know, uh, we we don't like to talk about train wrecks, but you know, the Eternals was a train wreck that uh, <laughs> that I think Rob and I both think of. But me, I fell asleep to it like three times. But honestly, th they try to give story to that, but they brought in Blade at the very end, at the end credit scene, and I thought that was interesting because it's like, oh wait, we're gonna get Blade finally, Mahershala Ali, we're gonna get him. Yes. And then, you know, and I would think that, you know, you could get these darker characters. You know, we might not get Morbius, but we can get Ghost Rider. We can get Man-Thing. We can get Blade and maybe Mephisto. <laughs> Mephisto's been like the uh, the ongoing joke of the MCU for a while. <laughs> oh, we talked about that a lot of times when we're talking about WandaVision. Yeah. So, all right. Well, with that, we're going to move right into notes. Do you have any additional notes that you have on the actual special, Rob, that we did? Uh, besides that, I mean, the, the notes, I think, again, you know, um, what I've covered before, you know, I love I love the black and white stuff. Even though it says it's in 4K, they added that graininess to it, which I love. The sound design, phenomenal on that. I mean, it was actually because, yeah. I, I mean, I have a nice surround sound system, and let me tell you. If you guys have a really good surround sound system, turn it up because it yep. has some great sound in it. And like I said, this was inspired that that the reason for the black and white and that grain is inspired by those 1930, 1940 horror films. And then, like I mentioned before, they did show the Wendigo. They just didn't mention that. So that was one thing that I thought <laughs> it was really that I took notes on. That. I was like, that has to be the Wendigo. And man thing, you know. Actually, uh, being practical in CG, it was just so well done. Those were the things that I kind of took away from, you know, a lot of these things that were uh, in there. Yeah, it, it, there's so much to take away. And I'm sure a lot of you listeners, there's a lot more cinema, like Marvel stuff that's going on. Look into the mausoleum that they get stuck into. Look at the names right. on the on the uh, the crypts that, that are there. Look into them. That's all I'm saying. A lot of people are out there. You can look at that on YouTube. I will highly recommend that you go look at uh, Collider and all those places that actually cover those things. And I think it's pretty cool to see how yeah, they I think one of the names. I think one of the names was one of the guys who did uh, the visual effects in another Marvel property <laughs> or something like that. So. Um, I was watching one of those and they were talking about like each of the names to what it could possibly mean. And I was like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. So yeah. <laughs> so if you can go out there and see it. All right, cool. Any quotes? Do you have anything that you liked out of it that they stated <laughs> or nothing? Yeah, no, there's actually three of them that I actually. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. So when, uh, when uh, uh, Elsa's uh, or, you know, uh, Bloodstone's uh, uh, widow when she was talking about, you know, uh, blood, you know, what, what's the name of the character? Uh, blood, something bloodstone. Um, Ulysses, Ulysses bloodstone. Right. So when he was talking about Ulysses bloodstone. She goes, he was a leader, a friend, a lover without equal. 
<laughs> you can see that everybody, everybody does. Uncomfortable. Cr- yeah, they just cringe. It's like, oh, <laughs> oh my God. And then when, like, you know, Ulysses, um, you know, like all of us on the animatronic was talking, and at the end he goes, "Good luck, I'll be rotting for you." Yep. Uh, and then he goes, "Up oh, graveyard humor," you know, something like that. I was like, "Geez, they're like really going for the cheesy stuff here." Yep. And my favorite one of them all was when um, they were questioning Elsa why she should be there. And one of the guys says, she doesn't even have a medallion. And she goes, uh, have you checked up your, uh, your own ass? <laughs> you oh, know, I remember so- that. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's pretty cool. <laughs> so it, there was those kind of quotes there. I was like, okay, you know, they, they have some pretty cool uh, stuff there that I like. You know, if they ever had a Ulysses uh, Bloodstone you know prop for sale for that that animatronics and it worked i would be <laughs> love to get that from some auction house because that was pretty funny and cool yeah uh, i would definitely put that in if i had my own house and put it in a corner and then i don't care if it's not <laughs> halloween all year round turn them on it's yep, awesome put a remote control and you turn it on <laughs> yeah uh the only one that i have would be at the very end and this is jack talking to ted at the very uh-huh. end and they're sitting on it's when they're full color which is amazing by the way and he goes let's do sushi he goes i yes. owe you <laughs> let's i owe you that and he goes but you decide and ted's like ur, 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 ur. <laughs> right <laughs> i thought that was pretty cute and fun but I, like was... the, I like the dynamic between them like they they just seemed like they were such good friends yes and they and they seemed like they want to take care of each other and they look out for each other. And it's and that ending is funny because one is like, I'm always looking out for you. And he goes, are you kidding me? I'm the one that's always getting you out of trouble. <laughs> yeah, it's so kind of that. See, yeah, that, that buddy cop, buddy, you know. Abbott buddy and kind Costello of kind of thing. Exactly. So that, I really thought that was a really cool dynamic that they had between them. So just kind of watching them talk. And I think the way Ted reacts. It's just like a normal human, you know, it's like, eh, yeah, whatever, you know, you know, yeah. he, very, very kind of cool and chill, it, even though he's just he, he's a monster, but he's just like this, you know, he's like this lovable thing that you see there. After, <laughs> when you see him, you're like, oh, OK, he's just a big lug. You yeah. Know, so. <laughs> yeah, I, I really do appreciate it. That's why I love the character itself, because it's yeah. one of those. It's like you're you like, oh, my God, I'm afraid. It's like, oh, wait. Oh, hold on. I got to know him. He's pretty cool. <laughs> Hold on, yeah, he's exactly. got a little bit, yeah, it's like he's got a carrot hanging off, yeah, it's okay, <laughs> got food. But yeah, that that was uh, pretty much our coverage, but we're going to go right into uh, comic news. We kind of omitted a couple of things. Uh, we already talked about Henry Cavill, you know, he's ditching Witcher to be Superman again. Correct. But uh, talking about more about DC... We got James Gunn being the new uh, head of uh, content for the DC Cinematic Universe, very much like Kevin Feige. So yes. we already know that James Gunn has completed his Guardians of the Galaxy 3, as well as the holiday special. So he's completed filming those, and his contract is up with Marvel. And he already spoke to Kevin Feige about this, about leaving, because his contract was already fulfilled and obligated. Now he's going to D.C. to pretty much be the Kevin Feige. And a lot of people I know and who I've spoke to, friends of ours, stated they're worried because of what he did in the Suicide Squad. They kind of just think and dwell on the funny aspects, especially like with Peacemaker. Right. But my feeling, honestly, if you look at Brightburn and how dark that movie was, which he did cover. Was that him? That was him. That that's that's a that's so, a pheno- yeah, yeah. That's a that's a phenomenal movie. Um I think the fact and I have said this always, you need to get somebody who is a fan of the property, who can respect the IP that they're dealing with and not try to deviate and try to make their own thing just because they want to, you know, try to make it look cool and say, Oh, I want to do something different. We have seen that before has not worked. We've seen it in star Wars. We have seen it in, um, sometimes we have seen it in the MCU. 
Uh, we have seen we have seen it everywhere, especially in DC. You see it all the time. So that's I think having him in there. He is good. look. He is good at what he does, and yes, when it comes to the humor part, he's great at that. But yeah. people got to remember that he is there just to be again a Kevin Feige, where he's not directing it. He's not going to tell them, "Hey, this is how the the script should be." He's just going to try to make sure that it's a cohesive universe and mm-hmm. that everything is going to relate to each other, and ha- and not have directors and and. And writers try to, you know, oh, you know, redcon this, so we'll do our own thing, and this and that. He's trying to really bring in everything together. And I'm really happy about that because what he, a lot of people I know wanted to do, uh, wanted Zack Snyder back. Oh, no, um, no, no. Please, right. no more so, Snyder. I, yeah, I so, did the, enjoy the Snyder cut in comparison right. to the Joss Whedon. But the thing is, I think James Gunn, as an overall hierarchy, I think of him almost like what Sam Raimi would have done if he was able to complete his Spider-Man run. Right. After Sony told him to F off and and then they and Marvel wound up saying, Hey, come back to us and do Stranger, yeah, you know, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Right. He did a lot of stuff in, in the Multiverse of Madness, which I did love and enjoy. But, you know, they kind of pulled loosen the reins on him a little bit right on that i think if he was able to get out what he needed with spider-man and didn't have sony choking him with everything that they did he would have done great and we would have gotten more sequels and we would have been better we wouldn't have you know even though i love andrew garfield as amazing spider-man we wouldn't have had the amazing spider-man we would have continued on with toby mcguire I but think, yeah, going back, but going back gone. to uh, Z- yeah. Z- Zack Snyder was the fact that you know since people complain, it was like, oh well, you know, people got to remember Zack Snyder already created this universe, you know, yes. and all the actors are in this. So you know, I think just James Gunn is going to continue the Zack Snyder universe. He might do it slightly different, or it mm-hmm. might be, but it is still within the Zack, Zack Snyder already established. Uh, Henry Cavill as Superman. I mean, listen, uh, Ben Affleck might come back as Batman now and more stuff. Mm. Uh, you have, you know, Jason He's slated for two more roles, honestly. Yeah. Ben, uh, we're going to see Batfleck again. Right. Uh, and I do enjoy that version of Batman. I really do. And I love him for it. And I'm so sad that he had to back out. And then yeah. we did get the Batman, which I did enjoy. Both Rob and I covered that a long time ago when it first yeah. came out. And I did enjoy that film for what it was. It had everything always has a flaw, but we kind of pointed that out for that particular movie. Right. But it, it, that one was done well. It's very much like with the Joker. The Joker broke records for, and that wasn't even canon to DC. Yeah, exactly. So, the, yeah. you know, James Gunn's going to try to get everything, you know, to make sure that everything is within the same universe and stuff like that. Listen, there's still a Joker with Lady Gaga coming out. So there's still that happening. So there's a lot, I think, a lot of... I say James Gunn has a lot on his plate to try to make... To the fix, DCU I say. To, to, right, the DCU <laughs> to actually, you know, uh, be a lot better. And you know what? I wish him all the luck in the world. Same here, Ian, uh, and I look forward to what he gives us. And like I said, Brightburn was the darker side of what, you know, it. it's basically... Superman Red Sun with him being a little kid and just going right. crazy. Yeah, and what if uh, what if Superman was, was a psycho little kid? <laughs> and and at the very end, we got teased with a crazy ass Aquaman and Wonder Woman. Yeah, and we never got those, but I would love to see that because that is how James Gunn works. Yeah, and honestly, and I'm looking forward to Peacemaker season two, which he's involved with. And uh, we will be covering that, and I'm sure that Steve and I will be covering just a brief version of our season one, because at the time <laughs> when season one came out, me and Rob, as we were working together at work, we were talking about it constantly, loving the idea, <laughs> and I was like, why didn't I cover this? We didn't cover it, sorry. Yeah. But we'll make it up to you come season two. But also, uh, congratulations to James Gunn, who married somebody from Peacemaker. His wife. Oh, he did. 
Oh, uh, the blonde that was in it uh, is his was his fiance during Peacemaker, and he married her. The, oh, the, look at the, that! The hit woman that was in that that was in okay. charge. Right, yeah. right. All right. Well, hey, congratulations, James. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, other than that, uh, Black Adam came out. Uh, you and I have uh, thoughts about Black Adam, Rob, but uh, it's right up there with getting a colonoscopy. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, every time I get one, I'm always knocked out. So thankfully, it was okay. Um, I, 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 I'm not saying I enjoy colonoscopy, but I did enjoy some of the action in it. I just didn't like the same things that you did as well. But the very right. end credit scene was pretty cool that we got with spoilers: Mr. Henry Cavill coming out as Superman and saying he yes. has to deal with Black Adam. We also have him to look forward to in Shazam, most likely, as well as maybe Black Adam himself, The Rock. So we might get that hint into that because they've been, yeah, we were teased last year with Shazam, if you remember. And that was during, uh, what did they call that? It was the DC Dome or whatever it was. Right. Oh, yes, yes. The DC, their, their version of like the, Disney, uh, you know, D twenty three, twenty three, which was yeah, absolutely abysmally horrible when they did it. I mean, so yeah, so basically, we got that kind of information. But you know, just to give you, uh, it's like Black Adams out there, uh, definitely Guardians of the Galaxy, the holiday special edition is coming out uh, that on Disney Plus. So look forward to that. I look forward to that as well. Because, you know, we get Kevin Bacon, you know, because Kevin Bacon might have been part of the Avengers at one point, as uh, Thor right. said, it was, he might have been, I don't know, I've been away from Earth for a while. And then, <laughs> you know, Drax and, you know, Mantis right, go right. try to find him to bring him back to uh, Star-Lord. Obviously, we know that the Guardians of the Galaxy, the special edition and the third movie will be there. Now, right. mind you... This is a little bit something that I've been looking at, and it's staring me in the face. All right. The first Guardians of the Galaxy movie, the color of the uh, the logo of Guardians of the Galaxy was brown. Who okay. died in that first movie? Who died in that movie? Mm-hmm. Oh, that was, uh, that was Groot. Okay. The colors of Guardians of the Galaxy's... Uh, name in guardians of the galaxy 2 what color was that blue and that was uh, uh what's his name um yandu 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 what's the oh. new color oh i don't know i haven't seen it what is the new color it's brown and gold oh so it's think hard. on that everybody yeah. think about that listeners so um i really don't want it to be because i like bradley cooper <laughs> but not to you know unless you're really listening and understanding well they I'm did saying. they did they did say that um what is it um uh this will actually look back into uh rockets rocket, history r- rockets his history so that that's gonna be very interesting very interesting all right so keep that in mind also here's a little fun thing that you guys could do you you listeners all you panelers out there all right if you guys don't come up with one, I'm going to come up with one for the every episode that comes after this. I'm going to come up with a Marvel joke. And I'm oh, not boy. starting with this one. So <laughs> I'm going to come up with a Marvel joke. So I'm going to come up with one. And when we put something down on Facebook, as when we say drop in the comments below, please put your joke down there as well. So that is your work, homework because we don't really get much feedback. But if you do. Please do that. Try that. If not, you're gonna have to deal with my really bad jokes. That is funny. All right. I just oh, by by the way, and yeah. by the time this comes out, maybe I don't know. I don't know where this uh, rumor is going, but I don't know if you've heard mm-hmm. something about Jason Momoa possibly tackling Lobo. Oh, that's been rumored for years, but if it but really he comes came to out and, fruition, he came out and, uh, and oh, not Jimmy Fallon. Uh, what, what's the other? Uh, 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 Jimmy Kimmel, hmm. and Jimmy Kimmel asked him about it, and he kind of like you know try to avoid the question, hmm. 
And it was like, oh, and now it seems like it's in a lot of different. Uh, it's been getting some traction because of that. Well, so, there was also something that was getting traction with Jason Momoa years ago when he was supposed to be the crow. But right. that didn't even come through, too. So my feeling is in unless there's a true official release of, hey, Jason Momoa, here's our right. screenshots of him as so and so. Here he is. Awesome. You know, but there's already there's already artists out there doing, uh, you know, like, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, things, uh, you know, him looking like a uh, Lobo. But it was funny because if he would have said no, then I would say, all right, but he just avoided the question and he smiled and stuff like that. And it was like, oh, OK, this might be something that's true. I could you actually know? see him playing that character. Oh, honestly. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, he I mean, loves think... to ride a motorcycle. He loves to hog. He is big. He definitely yeah. had he could have the hair even though he cut it after a while. Right. But honestly, <laughs> so eh, we'll see where that goes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, but yeah, there's a lot of great stuff out there actually right now the the one thing that just hit the uh the internet uh the second trailer to uh John Wick uh 4. So Yes, that, yes, yeah. That yeah. looks pretty awesome. Yeah, I look forward to that as well. All right. So. Well, let's move forward and go. And I already mentioned to you guys about feedback. So, well, we could be heard on Spotify, Google Play, Apple Podcasts, or whatever podcast player of choice that you use. If ratings are available, please give us a, a rating or review if possible. Obviously, in Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts. You can check out our website, Panels to Pixels Podcast. Yes, I know, Panels to Pixels Podcast.com. It's still me and Daphne are working on that. So I'm getting my friend Daphne to help me on on that. <laughs> you could go to our Facebook page, which I always say that's the best way to really get your feedback to us. And we do get people that do just go to facebook.com slash panels to pixels. We are on Twitter at panels to pixels. That's at panels and the number two pixels. And if you'd like, you just email us and that could be sent to panels to pixels one at gmail.com panels. Two is spelled out T O pixels and the number one at gmail.com. You can just type this out a uh, regular email, or if you want, you just record your voice and your thoughts, and we could play it right here on the podcast and pop that right in and comment. We could be found on YouTube. All you have to do is search for Panels to Pixels podcast. Please just give us a thumbs up or subscribe. That'd be awesome. Uh, we've had a few people actually do that. So uh, some people like to prefer to listen to that podcast on their YouTube, <laughs> on their TV, <laughs> uh, through that their surround sound. I've actually done it a bunch of times. We are also on Instagram. All you have to do is go at Panels to Pixels Podcast, spelled straight out, Panels to Pixels Podcast. Boom, right there. Steve will be putting up a lot of pictures when he does come back, trust me. All right, and uh, we also highly re recommend everybody to check out all the other podcasts on the Next Level Podcast Radio Online Podcast Network. Uh, we highly recommend them all. Wilhelm, I already mentioned with Ben Beck. Ben is back from his little hiatus. He's going to have a bunch of interviews for you to listen to from uh, some celebrities. So check that out when you can. He came back with Wilhelm with his top five. I think the last thing that I just listened to, which was awesome, our friend Jamie, uh, they covered their um, best remakes of horror movies. So I thought that was great for the holidays. And uh, yeah, there was a bunch in there that I did agree with myself. Go check that out. That is Wilhelm. Check out the, the <laughs> Melting Pat, Podcast Zero, and so much more. All you have to do is go to nextlevelradioonline.com and find the links there. Rob, you cool. were saying? Uh, no, you can find me at uh, Fantasy, uh, Fantasy Picks Movie Edition. Um, we're actually going to be going into our, our uh, I, I would say, our one-year anniversary with, uh, with the uh, podcast. And we're probably going to do about maybe two more episodes and then after that, take a little bit of a hiatus. So basically the end of season one, I would say. All right, cool. And then um, season two, actually, I have a lot of plans on, you know, some uh, some new things coming in uh, for that. And probably, you know, some uh, some really exciting things that, you know, should uh, that we will be covering. And still same subject matter where, you know, we cover movies that just didn't make it in the box office or 
you know, or <laughs> just for critically crap <laughs> and, uh, and how we can make it better ourselves because, you know, we think of ourselves as filmmakers when we're really not, but Hey, in yeah. our heads, you know? So, so yeah. So, uh, yeah, look out for that. Yeah. You could, uh, find fantasy picks movie edition on the power core entertainment network. Uh, you can just go to pyrocoreentertainment.com. Actually, you do cover more than just that. You, you do like to, like a fantasy football style pick of certain movies as well, which I do enjoy right. and like to cover as well. And you do reviews, movie reviews, yeah. just the yeah, same as I mean, what we do here. It, it's like the title says, it's a fantasy pick. So it's anything that, you know, so we do from, a, we do a draft. And then, of course, we do our fantasy picks. And we occasionally do some reviews. Uh, depending on the movies, I had I've been lacking, uh, slacking on those because I didn't cover <laughs> Thor: Love and Thunder the way I really wanted to. Yeah, uh, and a few others, but um, there's a good chance that I'll probably cover uh, Wakanda Forever, which is uh, coming. Well, it's uh, as of this podcast, it already came out. <laughs> yeah, it already came out. <laughs> so, yes, and so, Mr. Beck himself actually did, and he will be covering it on Wilhelm too. So Ben Beck will be covering. Wakanda forever right. and uh, do go listen to his thoughts as well as Rob and everybody else on fantasy picks movie edition. As far as us, I'm not sure exactly if we're covering yet. Yeah. I've yet to talk to Steve. He's been out for a while, but uh, where else can listeners hear me? Well, you could find me on adrenaline cinema podcast and that can be found on the pirate core entertainment website as well. Uh, pirate core entertainment.com. You could find the links there for adrenaline cinema podcast. After this comes out, you most likely will have speed up and coming out will be probably Ocean's Eleven or the Valley of Guanji. Not sure yet. So I got to get in touch with Jerry. So right now, you definitely have speed. <laughs> That'll be out. <laughs> so all you have to do is go to uh, Facebook.com slash Adrenaline Cinema Podcast. You can find all the links there. All you have to do is look at the image. Make your comment below of the movie that we're going to be covering. I probably would put up a slew of them. Just put your thoughts in there if you like for feedback. Uh, if there's something that you want us to cover, please send a message through that. You can. I do get messages. And on top of that, uh, you could easily just go to, like I stated already, PirateCoreEntertainment.com, which actually houses Adrenaline Cinema Podcast, Fantasy Picks Movie Edition, watched it in the 80s with Damien and his guests and when they cover everything all 80s as well as run for your lives with Daphne and Paik. So there is so much content there on the Pirate Core Entertainment Network. So check it out there. All you have to do is go to PirateCoreEntertainment.com. And like I stated, just go to NextLevelRadioOnline.com and check out all the podcasts here on this particular network that we all do love and enjoy. So with that, that's the end of our podcast episode everybody and i just want to thank everybody for listening i'm mark i am rob and same podcast different pixel different panel this was panels <laughs> the pixels and we'll see you on the next panel good night see ya <laughs> <laughs>